My name is Victor. In today's video, we are going to talk about another lens, and this is from TT Artisans, and it's their 50 millimeter APS-C. And also for full frame, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what's so special about this lens? This lens opens up from f16 to f0.95. Just look at that. And when I was talking to them, I was looking for a full frame lens to review and that they told me that this is an APS-C lens that they just released for the Sony E, but it also covers full frame. Then I thought I was just going to crop in again because that's usually what happens with APS-C lenses. But when I attach it to the a7 IV, just look at this, it covers the full sensor and this is crop mode, this is full frame mode. And there's no vignettes. Don't confuse this with the full frame version. The full frame version is 755 US dollars. And this is only 228 US dollars. And I think it's on sale right now for 218. So I mean, $10 discount, like it's nice. And I do want to mention that I got this lens for free to review, but it's not a paid video. So I can say whatever I want with this lens. The biggest question now is, is the F 0.95 usable at all? And that does it produce really good images? Okay, let's do rapid fire specs. Full metal construction with a smooth focus ring, but there's a little weight to it. There's an aperture ring and it does click ranging all the way from F16 to F0.95. I do like the vintage style where it has these white ridges and it does help gripping the focus ring. This lens is fully manual, so don't expect to use any autofocus with this lens. The minimum focus distance of this lens is super far in my opinion. And this thin lens cap is kind of weird, but oh well, it's just a cover. Just don't over tighten it. And one of the things that I'm not going to do with this lens is take this to places that could get things into the sensor because just take a look at the mount and the lens. The lens doesn't fully cover the flange of the Sony E mount and that it's not weather sealed. So things can go in. So just watch out for that. That's about it for the specs. We're going to talk performance now. How sharp is this lens at 0 0.95? Okay, let's look at the F0.95 on here. We're gonna focus on the Deity logo, and honestly, it's super soft, but the overall image is soft and pleasing. Again, this is the dreamy vibes that we're looking for. Let's bring it up to F1.4. I think the characteristic is still there, but if we zoom in here, the focus is still a little soft. If you don't want any of these characteristics, I suggest stopping down to F2 or F2.8. With this, you can see that the overall image is a little sharper and where we're actually focusing now on the Deity logo, it's nice and sharp. You can see that the chromatic aberration or the fringing is now gone. Now let's talk about the bokeh. The bokeh in this thing is beautiful, dreamy and super soft. And I really, really am impressed about the bokeh here. If we do stop down to F1.4, I mean, it's still there. It looks really good. And even at F8, you can see here that that it's smooth, everything is just, it melts in the background and it's just so pleasing to look at. Now let's talk about focus breathing and I think this lens is a little weak on focus breathing. So let's take a look at this. This is at F0.95 and that if we focus outside instead of the sand disc, I mean, you can see that focus breathing just pushes in and out. And I think with the F0.95, what happens is that it's super dreamy, it's super soft uh, as an image that it kind of hides that focus breathing away. Now let's look at the focus breathing at F2 since this kind of fixes all the image issues. Now we can see here that the focus breathing is way more apparent. And to be honest, I, it doesn't bug me that much, but I mean, it is there. As a budget lens, this can still pass. 
Now let's take a look at F5.6. Now this is going to be a little more standard for your daytime shots, but the focus breathing is just way worse. And I think if you're gonna do focus racking at F4 to F16, I would really consider not doing it and just setting the focus at one place because you're gonna suffer from very distracting focus breathing. Okay, we're gonna to touch on how I kind of created the intro scene for this. I pretty much just recreated looks from movies and TV shows that I watched lately and that we tried to use it with this lens since I think with creative work or narrative work, this lens is perfect for specific shots. Now, I shot everything at 0.95, it's a manual lens, while shooting myself, and this was really hard to pull off. I'm using a wireless transmitter, that's why I'm using my phone to look at, to monitor myself, to get in focus, and at 0.95, the shallow depth of field is very, very shallow, so it's hard to focus. Now the first shot here is that I pretty much did a softbox with grid, double diffusion inside, with a nanolight light, Forza 60, and I pretty much put the camera at at 3000 Kelvin so that it gives me this blue look. And at the back, there's a Nanlite Pavotube 6C2 and that is glowing red and also the same with the side or I guess in front of me. And that's it, that's all the lining here and there's nothing special, I just graded it with my S-Log footage, turned it to a little bluish tones in there and that was it. I got this reference from Euphoria, like it's just a practice and I think it looks good. Next up is this very emo shot. And with this shot, I really just wanted to showcase how much light the F0.95 aperture lets into your camera. And honestly, this is only the lamp lighting the entire scene. And obviously if I look at my phone, you can see that the phone light actually does a lot in this scenario. And it's quite nice and again, this is how good this f0.95 lens is. It's very dreamy and again, it's perfect for narrative work or any creative shots. And extreme low light situations like this, this is very, very useful. I had my a7 IV at S-Log3 and then set the ISO at 800 and I'm very impressed. Now this laying down scene, it's pretty much the same as the other one. Pretty much just a nan light with the softbox and grid double diffused inside that softbox and that's it. I pretty much dialed it down to, I think 2% and it let in this much light. Again, I was trying to recreate some euphoria shots and this is where like a kind of silhouette. I find that this one is a little bit trickier because this is the chromatic aberration showing. But again, for creative work, I do like this. But if I don't want this at all, I would just stop down to maybe f2 or f2.8. Overall, I think this lens is really good for a 50 millimeter. It gives you a very cinematic dreamy vibe at 0.95. The only things that I won't use this for is for sharp corporate, like if you need complete accuracy with your shoots, this is not the lens to use for. But anything creative, anything cinematic, anything that revolves around creative shots, this is the lens for you. N50mm is also one of the best natural looking focal lengths out there for your camera. As usual, I'm giving away my S-Log3 LUT pack. All you have to do to win is comment down below what you think about this lens and would you use the F0.95 at all in your video or photo shoots. And if you do want this LUT pack now, it's available in the link down below. And at 10,000 subscribers, we are giving away a free camera. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. No, I'm not. Yeah.